Hi, and welcome to this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One. My name is Linda Beach, and I'm an Extension Family and Consumer Sciences agent in the new Cottonwood Extension District, which is uh, the combination of Ellis and Barton counties. We're here today at the Community Assistance Center in Hayes, Kansas, uh, to talk about food donations for, to food drives and local food pantries. And joining me today is Lori Mortinger. She's the director of the Community Assistance Center uh, here, and she's gonna give us kind of the insider's look at what we need to know about uh, food pantries and food donations. So Lori, thanks so much for being with us well, today. Well, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Yep. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Community Assistance Center okay. here? We've been in Hayes um, 31 years. Yeah. Uh, we serve um, families and single people that um, are maybe having a little trouble with food or household things, um, you know, how expensive everything is nowadays. So we try <laughs> to provide a lot of assistance in different ways. But um, they can come in and get food um, six times in a year, and they can come and shop once a month for household and clothing items. So Okay, so you're not giving food every day. That's six times a year yeah. means we've got to stretch a lot of other things right. in between. We do. Yeah, okay, well, great. Um, and about how many people do you serve? Last six months, it's been about 92 food orders in a month. And um, there's a lot of families that don't get food every month. Obviously, you can't mm -hmm. because they, the way it's proportioned. But they come in and shop once a month for household and clothing items. So we serve 100, 200 a month on just shopping. Okay. So. And that food order could be just one single person or it could be a family of six or eight people, That's right? That's right. So there's a lot of food that goes That's through right. here. That's right. We do an A, B, or a C <laughs> order depending on the size of the family. And um, we, it, depending how full our food pantry is at the time, it's about a week's worth of food at a time. Okay. Sure. Great. Them about that long. Yeah. Well, um, do you see that your demand for food, the the orders that come in, does that vary throughout the year? I mean, when do people need more food from you? Well, we see a little more increase during the summer months because the people have their children home, and we seem to see that more people are coming in to get those food orders during those times of month. But because also they don't have school lunches to get sure. and breakfast sure. at school, so there there's more demand there. But um, yeah. It varies all the time because we don't know when they're coming in, but we did increase <laughs> right. the food orders. We were giving out four food orders and we saw that there was more of a need, so we've raised that to six and it really has put a hamper on the on the pantry. So yeah. we're needing more support. So. Yeah, we're here uh, in the food uh, storage area and you can see behind us there are quite a few uh, empty shelves. So when do you receive more foods than others? Is there a time of year when you've got more food coming in? Yes, we have two main food drives. Uh, the Mail Carriers National Food Drive is during Mother's Day weekend and graduation, so it's uh, it's a busy weekend. I know a lot of people are, sometimes forget about us, but um, that's our our main one of our main uh, food drives. Then DECA does trick or treat so others can eat, and that is the biggest one. Um, in October okay. and uh, the kids actually groups go around door to door and the DECA kids they organize it all they're wonderful um, they've been doing it for us for a lot of years um, and so we get most of our canned goods um, and that kind of stuff through that drive. Uh -huh. But those are our two biggest main drives. Okay, that we have. so drives yeah. and then organizations, school classrooms, church groups oftentimes bring food in during the holidays, yes. right? I mean, yes. I've been involved in groups that do holiday food That's collections. That's when people think of us the most, I think, is during the time of Thanksgiving and Halloween, you know, and Christmas. But we need it all year. And so I think that that's why we get lower it during the summer months is because people think, well, they, they don't really need it, but we do really need it. And so um, we can we just need more donations coming in if we can. Yeah, um, so the big food drives come in in October or in the fall. Right. And yet your biggest need is in the summer when all those right. supplies are dwindling. Right. We're here uh, right before right. school starts. And um, uh, so we're, we're at the lowest time for supply right. and one of the larger times for demand. Right. Okay, well, great. Yep. Now in your facility, can you handle perishable items? Yes, we can. We do have freezer space. Um, we um, buy a lot of things people don't really realize. We furnish butter and eggs and we give out hamburger. And um, we do get some things donated from some of the stores here in town locally, produce 
produce and frozen meats. So we have um, we have quite a few freezers, six freezers and three refrigerators. So and we, you also have a way to use fresh produce yes. that comes in and you know has two or three days of good usefulness to right. get back out in somebody's hands. We take garden produce and we set that out in the lobby so people can come in and actually pick that up during the week and we don't they don't have to fill out any paperwork to do that. Oh, that's great. So when we have a surplus of different things, uh, Victoria Bottling brings us Coca-Cola, brings us stuff sometimes and we'll set it out. We try to keep things moving pretty regularly yeah. so people can get, it gets to the clients before anything spoils. That's great. Yeah. Now, not every community probably can handle the bulk of refrigerated and frozen items that you do here. Right. So, you know, mostly we're thinking about non-perishable foods. It's just neat to know that here at this facility, they do have a way to deal with perishable foods. Yeah. So do you have any guidance for some of those food safety issues for the food that's coming in from donations? Um, it cannot be opened. If it's non-perishable and you tried something and you didn't like it, we can't take it and give that back out to anybody. Um, and say if you catch some fish or you get some wild game, you process your process it yourself, we cannot use that. So it has to be through a meat packing plant mm -hmm. or something that's not opened. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, what about expiration dates, damaged items, dented cans, for example? What about that okay. here in we, your facility? We do take things that are expired. We usually go from six months to a year, and depending what it is, you can usually kind of tell. And we set that out in the lobby, and then the customer, the client, can decide if they want to take those items. Um, if the cans are dented a small amount, we put those on the shelf and they will go in a food order. But if they're dented pretty pretty much, you know, a lot of dents, we will set those out too and people will use those at their own discretion too. Okay, so yeah. kind of a use at your own right. risk sort of thing. Right. Okay, well now let's talk about the health and nutrition of some of the foods that you give to clients. Do you have a pattern or a guideline for what goes in those food boxes? When they first started the, the food bank here in Hayes, they had a nutritionist come in and kind of decide what type of items we needed. So we like to give out peanut butter for protein and we like to, we always try to keep some beans um, and we give eggs and we give butter. We did cheese a long time ago, but we just, it, we'd always have to repackage that and it just wasn't working out mm -hmm. because of the cost of it. So, but we try to give a wide variety. We have vegetables all the time and just a wide span of and different fruit things. And fruit and yes. all those. Okay. It's nice to get fresh stuff, but we don't always have it. So. Yeah, great. So yeah. do you generally get the kinds of foods that you need from the food drives and the donations? Most of the time we do. There are some items that we don't always get that we use, like we use an all-purpose baking mix, and it's not a real expensive um, at the store, but they can use it to make biscuits and pancakes and just a, a wide variety of different things. And so we like to get that, and we don't get a lot of that. So we purchase that every every few months, you know, when we run down. Um, cereals, we don't seem to get a lot during the food drives. I think maybe sometimes because they're larger items, people don't always put those in. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, <laughs> it, it, it kind of varies out. So are there any other kinds of donations that you need? not food related. Yes, we always take gently used furniture, dressers, beds. Uh, we are the only uh, place in Hayes that takes used beds so that we can give them out to clients. Uh, a lot of situations, if somebody comes out of the shelter or they have their kids, uh, need to get the kids back in the home, there's a lot of different situations and they need beds. They mm -hmm. have to have those. So we do take gently used beds. We do ask that people don't leave them outside the building. Um, check with us, make sure we have room for them because we do have a storage unit and it's not very big. But we try to keep, people will sign up for furniture and then we just um, good vacuum sweepers microwaves things like that if people are moving maybe and they don't want to have a garage sale we can sure use them if they still work things like that that's are great. great that's great yeah. now I would guess that you probably also could use monetary donations and donations of volunteer time am yes. I right yes All we right. do have that's a lot of volunteers right now we have about 48. Oh, wow, and wow, excellent. It used to be up a little higher than that in the 60s, but some people come a couple times a week, some people come once a week. Um, so, you know, if you have some hours you want to give, you can always check with us and see. Some days are busier, so it might not work for us, but we sure will try to work you in if we can help, you know, you can help us. Oh, great. So. Well, we really thank Lori for being with us today to talk about how the operation works here at the Community Assistance Center in Hayes. And if you've got a food pantry or a food bank in your community, get acquainted with them. Find out what they need, when they need it, what other items they can use. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about donations of food to your local community food drive or food bank, and we're going to really zero in on food safety and nutrition uh, considerations for those donated foods. So please uh, stay tuned and join us.
Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Come on down to Bees Bargains at Smith Center, Kansas. We got the deals. We have a wide variety of inventory like soap, toiletries, toys, mini fridges, even kitchen tables. Everything is new at Bees Bargains, but it's all half the price. Yes, half price. That isn't just a good deal, that's a great deal. And with new items daily, our inventory is constantly changing. That means new great deals are coming in by the truckload weekly. Bees Bargains at Smith Center. If you can't find a deal here, you can't find one anywhere. Welcome back to this episode of Extension Ed Talks. I'm Linda Beach. I'm a Family and Consumer Sciences agent for the new Cottonwood Extension District, which includes Ellis and Barton counties. In our first segment, we visited with Lori Mortinger, who's the director of the Community Assistance Center here in Hayes, and that's where we'll where I still am, uh, to be able to talk with you more about some considerations for food donations that you might make to a community food drive or to a local food pantry. And if you don't have an operation quite like this in your community, check out and see what is available to be able to share with people who are in need. Well, I think Lori really emphasized for us that community food donations are a really important source of food for individuals and families who are trying to make ends meet. And uh, the need obviously um, is there throughout the year. Uh, here in Hayes, it varies just a little bit um, from month to month, but um, you may find in your community that's a need as well. Donating to a food drive or, or making a donation directly to a food pantry is a really great way for neighbors to help neighbors. And it's a wonderful way to instill the values of generosity and sharing in your family and your children. So I encourage you to think about doing that. Well, you know, here in the U.S., there are some um, health conditions that are fairly common. Um, things like hypertension, that's high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, these are common health concerns that are related to the diet and lifestyle that a person might lead. Um, the unfortunate thing is, is that the prevalence of these health conditions is a little bit higher for people who have to rely on food pantries for their, um, for their foods. So what I'd like to get us thinking about is how important it can be to donate foods with lots of good nutrition uh, to the local food bank so that they can donate nutritious food to people who are in need. Well, the good news is that some of these chronic health, health conditions that I mentioned can be aided in part by the diet that a person eats. And um, eating that variety of healthful foods goes a long way to helping people feel better and become healthier as well. You can give that gift of uh, better health by donating nutritious foods to the food um, pantry or the community food drive. And we have a pattern for what makes up a healthy diet in the My Plate logo, which comes from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So we're, we want to be thinking about a balanced diet when we're making food donations. So we want to include fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein foods, and low-fat dairy products to be able to ensure that food bank customers have access to a val balanced variety of foods. Well, Extension has a great flyer that's available. Um, you can use it with groups you belong to. If you're involved in organizing a food drive, you can scatter this around in the community that gives people some ideas about the healthful foods that they may want to donate. And this is split up food group by food group. So I've got some of those examples with me here today and I thought we would just briefly talk about some of the items that might be worth considering. Uh, in the fruit group, we're looking for things that are um, full of color, so uh, colorful uh, fruit items. 
low in sugar if possible uh, as more healthful and this could include whole fruits fruit sauces like applesauce um, dried fruits which i have represented by my raisins and food um, uh, or whole fruit juices is what i meant to say uh, in this category as well Vegetables, again, we're looking for lots of color because even the pigments in these foods contain some phytonutrients that can be really healthful uh, for people to consume. Uh, in the vegetable category, low salt may be a consideration that would be worth considering. And look at the colorful variety that's available. It doesn't just have to be green beans and corn when there are lots of other colorful vegetables that can be donated for people to enjoy. Now the protein group is harder if the local food pantry does not have access to refrigerators and freezers like we do here at the Community Assistance Center in Hayes. So some non-perishable, shelf-stable protein items include um, the beans, both canned beans and dry beans, um, canned fish products. Uh, I've got tuna and salmon in a pouch. Um, canned chicken works great. And certainly peanut butter is the old reliable uh, for being a great source of protein that doesn't have to be refrigerated. In the grain group, let's think about whole grain products, the things that have the entire grain uh, processed into them together because that includes more fiber and more of the nutrition that's in the, all the parts of the grain. So here I've got um, whole grain cereals and crackers. Um, I've got whole grain pasta and brown rice as some examples that might be foods that are more healthful in the grain group that you might want to donate. And finally, don't forget the dairy group as well. Shelf-stable dairy uh, items might include uh, the non-fat dry milk or um, canned evaporated milk. Those both can be a great source of dairy um, uh, nutrients to families. Um, certainly both of these are great for cooking because they tend to scorch less easily than using fresh whole fluid milk anyway. So just to wrap up what I'm talking about here today, I'd really encourage you that when you're donating food for a food drive, that you choose foods with maximum nutrition from all the food groups. Because when you donate nutritious food, your neighbors eat healthier. Now in our final segment, we're gonna talk about some of the food safety considerations. So please stick around and let's learn more about donating food for community food drives and to local food pantries. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden, where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Welcome back to our final segment of this episode of Extension Ed Talks. I'm Linda Beach. I'm a family and consumer sciences agent for the new Cottonwood Extension District, which includes Ellis and Barton counties. And today we've been talking about the importance of donating foods in our local communities to help the friends and neighbors who might be having a hard time getting by. We've also talked about the value of donating foods with maximum nutrition in all five of the food groups of my plate. We're gonna wrap up today with just a few thoughts about the food safety concerns uh, so that uh, the folks who receive food pantry donations will be getting 
food that's safe and wholesome for themselves and their families. Now we heard Lori Mortinger say earlier that um, there are some things that they do not take uh, here at the Community Assistance Center. And we'll review some of those, but you need to check with your local food pantry and see what their policies are on what they consider safe and wholesome food that they'll be able to share with others. Well, you know, one of the things that is most helpful, I think, about the whole food donation process is that it helps to reduce food waste in this um, very food or very productive food oriented um, country of ours. The statistics that I'm seeing from USDA tell us that about 30% of food in this country is wasted at the retail and consumer levels. So being able to share things that you may not be able to use before they go bad with someone else who can use them right away is a great way to prevent wasting that food and making sure it gets into the hands of somebody who can use it. Well, um, we need to help that whole, the food pantries in our communities manage food waste as well. If we donate things that are not something they can accept, they're going to have to discard it at their level um, too. So by choosing things carefully and checking uh, some of the expiration dates, checking the integrity of the packages, you'll be able to ensure that the food you donate can go right into the hands of a hungry person that needs it. So I guess my um, best advice is don't just clean out your cupboard when it's food drive time and donate those things that you aren't going to be able to use any longer. Um, check and, and think through. Make sure that what you're donating is not expired and that you've put some thought into being able to keep food healthful for those customers as well. So you may be asking yourself, so what is it that I can donate and what should I avoid? Well, let's start with those things we want to avoid donating to a food pantry uh, first. And the first thing that we uh, should not donate uh, for, for local food drives or community food uh, pantries is expired foods. Now, not every food has an expiration date on it, and certainly some of those can extend a little behind, uh, beyond that suggested use-by date. But if it's a perishable type food item, something that can go bad eventually, you want to make sure that it's within the time frame the manufacturer suggests that it's safe and wholesome. Donate, do not donate food that is spoiled, moldy, uh, that looks like it's beginning to decay. Now that may be more with some of our perishable food items, things that are uh, like fresh fruits and vegetables, refrigerated items, meat products. Uh, so make sure that those things are still uh, yeah, safe and wholesome. Um, don't donate damaged packages or dented cans. Now you heard Lori Mortinger say earlier that they cannot accept packages that have been opened. Okay, so sometimes there are things that, you know, one bite of that box of cereal and you know your kids are never going to eat it again. Unfortunately, that's not something that here at the Community Assistance Center they may be able to use. The other thing I wanted to mention are dented cans. Um, I have brought with me a can today that's got two dents in it, a large deep dent here and a smaller dent right beside it, which leaves us with a very sharp crease on the edge of this can. Um, the general guideline with canned goods is that a small dent may not um, damage the integrity of the food inside that can at all, but a deep dent, one that has a sharp crease, or one that's dented on the seam, may be something that could potentially not last very well and become dangerous. Certainly also look for any rust pitting, uh, ends that are swollen or bulging on cans we want to avoid as well. I'm a home canner, but we can't donate home canned food items to local food drives either. And here at the Community Assistance Center, they don't want to accept anything that comes in glass uh, because of the way they store food and handle it. And um, so what about some of those other things that are sort of in between? 
Well, I have a whole category of things that we call uh, food donations where there may be, or it depends, and it depends on the policies and the facilities of your local food pantry. For example, can they accept fresh fruits and vegetables, baked products, either commercial bakery items or home baked products? You need to check with your local food pantry to be sure. Um, and those refrigerated and frozen items, it depends. We can donate those here to the Community Assistance Center, but you may not be able to in your local community. So what are the things that we know we can donate? Anytime we can donate non-perishable, nutritious, canned and packaged foods that have not expired and aren't damaged and are great to be used for food donations. Lori also mentioned that we can donate um, monetary contributions. They always will appreciate cash donations and volunteering your time may be a way that you can donate to the food pantry as well. Well, we've got some new extension resources that can be helpful to you as you are thinking about donating safe and nutritious foods for food pantries, soup kitchens, and that community food drive. You can find those at your local county extension office um, or online at K-State Research and Extension as well. Well, let me just close today by reminding you that local food drives and food pantries appreciate any and all donations that kind-hearted, generous people want to make to them. But if you will donate a variety of safe and nutritious foods, those food pantry customers in your community will be able to have a better diet and a healthier life. <clears throat> Thanks for letting me be with you today uh, for this Extension Ed Talk. I'm Linda Beach, County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences in the Cottonwood Extension District.